Imagine you're in a courtroom. You're on trial. And the prosecutor, the devil, Satan, the great deceiver, is putting up a strong case against you. See, he has God's law. And he shows the jury the first commandment. You shall have no other gods. And as he strolls in front of the jury, he mentions the many times that you have chosen your family, your spouse, your children, your parents over God. His evidence is your own words. And your words are echoed throughout the courtroom. I love you more than anything in the world. I love you to the moon and back. I don't want to die until I see our kids grow up. I don't want to die until I see my grandchildren. And Satan smiles, and he holds up your checkbook, your savings account, your investments. And he shows the jury just how important these things have been to you, how you've coveted them as your very own, not wanting to share them with anyone sometimes not even your own family, especially people who are in need, or even with God, even though they're all a gift to you from God. Satan wastes no time. Moving right on to the second commandment, you shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God. And again, he uses your own words as as evidence against you. And he goes through this long list of the number of times that you have used God's name to curse someone else when you were angry. He pulls out another list of the number of times that you use God's name in a careless way. Like when you would say, oh, geez, or OMG, oh, my God. Satan chuckles as he shuffles through some papers there on the table, and he pulls out another list of the number of times that you have lied. The times that you've lied to your family saying that you're working late when you're really goofing off. Or when you lied to your boss, saying that you were sick, but you just wanted to go play golf. Or the number of times that you lied about your neighbor, hoping that other people would hate them just as much as you do. Satan notices that you're squirming around in your seat. And he says, let's talk about the third commandment. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. So, he says, you say you believe in God. You say that you believe in Jesus. But you don't go to church regularly. You say that you can worship God Staying at home. You say you can worship God on the golf course. You say church isn't all that important that you need to attend every Sunday. And when you do go to church, you don't go prepared. You don't get adequate rest so that you can listen Instead, you're dozing off during the sermon. 
And when you do listen, you don't put into practice what was taught because you don't want to change. You've made worship more about you than about God and the saving gospel. You say you believe in Jesus, but you don't share him with your friends, your neighbor, or your family, or a coworker. You claim that you don't know that much about the Bible, even though you've attended church your whole life. Satan picks up another sheet of paper and says, I have here in my hands the number of times you thought church was stupid. The times that you said all the church wants is my money. The times that you said the preacher doesn't know what he's talking about. He's not a real man of God. Oh, wait. And what about this? You say you believe in God. How is it then that you don't believe everything in the Bible is God's actual word? And you look at your defense attorney, and he just waves you off. Satan continues. Let's talk about the fourth commandment. Honor your father and your mother. You've got a problem with authority, he asks you. Oh, the number of times you weren't even close to being honest with your parents about grades, school, dates. The number of times that you snuck out of the house to go to that party, to be with your friends to be with that girl or that boy. Let's talk about just plain, disre just plain disrespect. The number of times you rolled your eyes at your parents or the sarcastic remarks you made under your breath when you were reminded that you had chores to do before going out. That's not to mention the disrespect that you have for authority. Exhibit two, please, says Satan. And again, it's your, 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 your voice being heard throughout the, the courtroom of you bashing the president of the United States. Of you showing disrespect for the people who were elected to Congress your frustration over a decision that a local school board made. You getting angry because you got a speeding ticket. Red-faced, you just sit there. Satan turns and addresses the judge. Your Honor, he says, there are six more commandments that will further prove my, the defendant's guilt. For the sake of time, I will be brief with the remainder. And the judge nods his head to move on. Commandment five, you shall not murder. Satan says, now please understand, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, the defendant may not have actually put one person fit to physical death, but I will remind the defendant of their words of hate and how those words were so cruel that it cut to the very heart of the person they despised. And inside, that person bled to death. And not just the person they despised, but the people who heard their words were injured in such a way 
that their only recovery was to join the defendant's hate. Which, as you know, corresponds with the Eighth Commandment, but we'll talk about that later. First, let's go on to the Sixth Commandment. You shall not commit adultery. And again, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, the defendant may not have actually committed the act itself. But in their hearts and in their minds, they did. Exhibit three will show their thoughts and the images and the movies that were played out in their minds of their engagement with others outside of their marriage. And as you look up, every thought you've ever had, every image, every movie that you've ever had plays out in front of the entire courtroom for all to see. And as a defendant, you want to crawl under the table and hide in embarrassment. Satan smiles at you. He knows he just buried you. And you're struggling to wonder why your defense attorney is not objecting. Again, he just waves you off. Commandment 7, Satan says, you shall not steal. And you sit there shaking your head. More images of you are played out in the courtroom for all to see. Of you leaving work early, having someone else punch out for you. You grabbing that soda while the workman was waiting to put it in the Coke machine. You cheating that guy out of the rookie card of Michael Jordan. Of you saying, well, it's only $10. They're not going to miss it. Satan is now skipping around with joy, twirling about. Commandment 8, he says, you shall not give false testimony. By now, your face is in your hands because you know, oh, do you know how much gossip you've done throughout your life? How you trash talk others? How you've torn them down in front of other people? How you've tried to destroy their reputation simply because you didn't like them? And Satan smiles and says, Commandments 9 and 10, you shall not covet. And every desire you ever had for another person or another object, every time you were not happy with the things that God has given to you, every time you wished you had more, pops up in the courtroom like popcorn. And Satan walks over to you, stands in front of you, points his finger at you. And he says, Your Honor, this person is guilty and deserves nothing but eternal death for sinning against you. And your defense attorney pops right up. Jesus. And he says, Father, your honor. Yes, my client has committed all these heinous acts of sin that the defense has mentioned. And Father, there is so much more that were not even mentioned. And he lifts up his shirt and he shows marks where a sword had penetrated his side. 
He holds up his hands, showing nail marks. And just one drop of blood falls upon you, upon your, your forehead. And it covers every one of your thoughts, your words, your imagination, your heart, your entire body. And Jesus declares you not guilty. And the judge slams his gavel and says, you are free to go in peace. Serve the Lord. Amen.